Your neighborhood Chevron gas station invites you to... Let George Do It. Brought to you by the makers of climate-tailored Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. George Valentine opened his own office, he advertised to the world at large that no matter what problem might be troubling them, all they had to do was leave it to George. Since then, he has had a variety of clients with a variety of problems. Now it's early morning. George is just opening the door to his office. Oh, here's Mr. Valentine now. Well, good morning, Claire. Mr. Valentine, this is Mr. Ralston. He's been waiting to see you. Oh, fine. Glad to know you, Mr. Ralston. What can I do for you? Uh, Mr. Valentine, do you... Do you like dogs? Do I like dogs? Why, Mr. Ralston, you're speaking of man's best friend. Everyone else may fail you, but a dog remains faithful and loyal to the end. I guess I like him. Why? Because I've got to find Snookums a home for a couple of days. Snookums? My dog. Oh. My wife calls him Snookums. She, <laughs> she's a great one for nicknames. She calls me Bunny. <laughs> Where do I come in on this, Bunny, uh, Mr. Ralston? Well, you understand I can't trust just anyone with Snookums. He's a very valuable dog. Uh, besides, my wife is quite fond of him. But, Mr. Ralston, why do you have to find a home for him? Well, I, uh, well, uh, I, I've got to have him out of the house for the next couple of days. Why? Because I, uh, well, because I just do, that's all. Well, why not send him to a kennel? Oh, I couldn't do that. They might, uh, I mean, they, uh, well, I, I couldn't do that. Why not? Snookums wouldn't be happy there. You see, he doesn't like dogs. He doesn't like dogs? No, just people. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mr. Valentine, I, I believe you're just the man I've been looking for. Uh, will you take care of Snookums for me? Oh, but Mr. Ralston... You, you'd I... have to keep him with you all the time. I'll be back here day after tomorrow to pick him up. Uh, will you do it? Uh, I don't know about that. I'll pay you well, of course. How well? Uh, suppose we say uh, $200 for the two days? Uh, $200 and expenses? Oh, yes, of course. $200 and expenses. Mr. Ralston, I'm your man. But, Mr. Valentine... It's all right, Claire. Where's Snookums now? Well, uh, downstairs in my car. Uh, you'll have to take him right away. I can't keep him with me for another minute because I... But, well, I mean, uh, well, you see, I'm in a hurry. Claire, get Sonny. Have him go with Mr. Ralston to my apartment. Sonny can stay with Snookums till I get home. All right, Mr. Valentine. Then I'll see you day after tomorrow, Mr. Ralston? Oh, yes, certainly. I'll be here... Oh, and, uh, Mr. Valentine, uh, you'll be good to him, won't you? Good to him? <laughs> ah, don't you worry, Mr. Ralston. That mutt has got himself a mother. Okay, Claire, let's go. I bought Snook of something for supper. What'd you get? Quarter pound of hamburger. Oh, do you think that'll be enough? Well, it ought to give him two good meals anyway. What kind of a dog is he? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, Claire, I forgot to ask Mr. Ralston. He was in such a rush. He certainly was. Yeah. Snook him. Must be a lap dog with a name like that. Think so? Yeah. Probably a Pomeranian or a Peach. Mr. Valentine, I don't like to keep bringing up a woman's instinct, but I wish you hadn't gone ahead with this. Now, what's the matter with you, Claire? Why, what could be softer? $200 in expenses just to have a dog for a roommate. Yes. But there was something about Mr. Ralston. He seemed to be keeping something from you. Oh, women and their imagination. Come on, hurry up. Snookums must be getting hungry. <laughs> I hope Sonny's been nice to Snookums. Oh, you don't have to worry. Sonny's always been crazy about kittens and rabbits. Yeah. I suppose he likes little dogs, too. I hope so. Yo! Hey, look up! Mr. Valentine, it's a horse! Ah, ah. Now, don't be afraid, Claire. It's just a great day. Just a great... Mr. Valentine! Down, Snookums! Down! He wants the meat. Well, I'm trying to give it to him. Get down. Get away from me. Mr. Valentine, give him the meat. But he wants my arm, too. Well, throw the package on the floor. Oh, here. Look at him. Yeah, there. Phew. Okay, Claire. Oh, look at your apartment. Oh, you mean what's left of it. Now, why would Sonny let him chew up the furniture? You'd think he'd have enough sense to take care of him. You'd think you'd have enough sense to ask what kind of a dog it was. So, where is that kid? That's funny. I wonder what... Oh, Mr. Valentine... You don't think... Now, Claire, don't be silly. He's a friendly dog. Too friendly. Sonny, where are you? On top of the mantel. Sonny. Well, what are you doing up there? 
kept knocking me down. I had to get away. Oh, Sonny, you're a coward. He's, he's bigger than I am, Mr. Valentine. I didn't mind when he knocked me down and licked my face, but I got a little nervous when he started putting my head in his mouth. <laughs> All right, come on down. Now while he's there. Claire, put Snookums in the kitchen. Put him there yourself. You're his mother. Oh, great. Here, Snookums. Snookums. Oh, follow me, Snookums. You run, me. follow you. He will? Okay. Come on, Snookums. Mr. Valentine, what happened? He followed me. Now, stay in there, you big mutt. All right, Sonny, you can come down now. Okay. A little lap dog. Well, how was I to know? I've got news for you, Mr. Valentine. He eats six pounds of food a day. Six pounds? What kind of food? I'm not sure. He seemed awful fond of my head. Okay, I'll get him a bone. Mr. Valentine, if you listen to me, you'll take that dog right back to Mr. Ross. Now, Claire, I promised to take care of him, didn't I? Anyway, I don't even know where Mr. Ralston lives. You see, there's something awfully fishy about the whole thing. Maybe it isn't even his dog. Will you stop it? All right, have it your own way. But I'm not staying. See you in the morning. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Valentine. Yeah, uh, Sonny, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Oh. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to stay here and help me take care of Snookum. Well, Mr. Valentine. You heard me. Where will I sleep? Well, you can sleep with me. And where will Snookum sleep? In the kitchen. Okay. But you tell him, will you? Well... Good night, boys, and sweet dreams. Sonny. <laughs> What's the matter? Will you please get your cold feet off my back? Yeah, you must be dreaming. <laughs> oh, Sonny, stop it. Oh, Sonny. It isn't me, it's Snookums. Snookums? Why, you get out of this bed, you mutt. Now go on, feed it. Sweet dreams, Mr. Valentine. Yeah, sweet dreams. Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine. Uh, yes, huh? Snookums. <laughs> what? Your turn, Mr. Valentine. Oh, not again. <laughs> Oh, Claire, it's you. Good morning, Mr. Valentine. Beautiful morning. Yeah. Good morning, Sonny. Jesus, just how can you be so cheerful so early in the morning? It isn't very early. Oh, we didn't get much sleep last night. Oh, too bad. Where's the new boarder? In the kitchen, eating his breakfast. Horse meat, pounds and pounds. He's practically got the whole horse in there. <laughs> I brought you the morning paper, Mr. Valentine. Oh, that's thoughtful of you. Here, read this story on the second page. Why, something special? I don't like to say I told you so, Mr. Valentine. Read it for yourself. Hey, what's it all about? Go ahead. Suffer and text. It's a picture of Snookum. Read it. Valuable dog, stolen. Stolen? Hercules of Meadowbrook, owned by Madame Charlotte Cornwell Smith, famous retired opera singer. Opera singer? Disappeared from his home yesterday. Oh, I don't want to read any more. Go ahead. What does it say, Claire? Madame Cornwell Smith entered him in the dog show tomorrow morning. He was expected to make his championship. Foul play is suspected. Well, do you suppose Ralston stole him and then got cold feet and dumped him off on me? He's your little charge. You figure it out. Gee, please, Mr. Valentine, what are you going to do? Well, we've got to get Snookums to Madame Cornwell Smith's home without the police seeing him. Uh, maybe she'll believe my story. It's going to take a little doing to get that big ox home without somebody seeing him. But we can't keep him here. That dog is wanted by the police. Yeah. We got a hot dog. <laughs> Down! Okay, Sonny, open the front door and see if the coast is clear. All right, Mr. Valentine. Claire, where'd you park my car? Around the corner. I couldn't get any closer. Well, if the coast is clear, we'll make a dash for it. You and Snookums make the dash. I'll catch up with you. Mr. Valentine. What's the matter? There's a policeman crossing the street, and he's headed this way toward this building. Oh, great guns. Come on, we got to get him back upstairs. You haven't got time. Then we got to hide him. Have you got a piano box handy? Oh, wait a minute. Look, in front of Mrs. Jones' apartment. A buggy. A baby buggy? Yeah. Come on, Sonny. Help me. But, Mr. Valentine... Mrs. Jones won't mind if we borrow it for a few minutes. Sonny, get his feet. He keeps wiggling them. Claire, help him. I'm trying to. Now, give him a shove. <laughs> You're good, dog. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay, cover him up. You wheel him, Claire. You wheel him. He's your baby. Oh, thanks. Now, come on, fast. And don't stop to talk. Open the door, Sonny. I've got all my fingers crossed. He's coming this way, all right. Oh. 
Lady Luck stay with us. Well, good morning, folks. Out to give the baby an errand? Oh, uh, that's right, officer. Come along, sweetheart. Uh, can I take a peek? I'm just crazy about babies. Oh, uh... But he's leaving, officer. Oh, uh, too bad. Who does he look like? Just like his mother. <laughs> Isn't that nice? You're too modest, darling. Officer, he's the image of his father. Really? No. Oh, yes. He has his father's ears. Now, come on, Claire. Goodbye, officer. Uh, say, did you hear a dog last night? We got several complaints from this building. A dog? Well, uh, we were awfully busy last night, officer. Snookum kept us up. I know how that is. I got six just like yours. <laughs> I want to speak to Madam. Why, it's you. Oh, hello, Mr. Valentine. I want to talk to you. Shh, not so loud. Uh, uh, come in. Well, what are you doing here anyway? Why, I live here. You live here? Certainly. I'm Mr. Madam Cornwall Smith. Huh? Uh, I mean, she's Mrs. Ralston. Well, now, look. I don't know what this is all about, and I don't want to know. But I've got your dog outside my car. You come on down with me and get him, you understand? Mr. Valentine, you promised you'd help me. I don't want to be in on anything crooked. But this isn't crooked. You see, first, there was her voice. Her voice? I had to play second fiddle to my wife's voice. Oh, that's right. She was an opera singer, wasn't she? <laughs> then I bought Snookums. And since then, she's paid no attention to me at all. Snookums comes first. Well, I'm the one who's been leading a dog's life. Well, I'm very sorry for you, Mr. Ralston, but she I don't... She said she'd enter him into this show, but she promised to give him away if he didn't make his championship. Give him away? My brother has children. They'd love to have Snookum. Are they big, strong children? You see, Mr. Valentine, I'm afraid that if he's in the show, he'll become a champion. And you know what my life will be like then? You mean you want me to keep Snookum so that he can't be in the dog show? Is that it? Will you do it? Oh, now listen. The police are looking for him. Well, I can't call them off or my wife will suspect me. But the dog belongs to me, not to my wife. And I have papers to prove it. I'm sorry, Mr. Ralston, I'm but... your client. You can't let me down. I don't like to, Mr. Ralston. It's only until tomorrow. It's the only thing I can do to get a little uh, attention around this house. Things have got to change. After all, I've been a chump for 30 years. Okay, Mr. Ralston, okay. I guess I can be one for another 24 hours. Well, George seems to be having a lot of trouble with his latest client, a great Dane. We'll see what happens in a minute. Meanwhile, I'd like to talk about two of the best things in a motorist's life that are free. Sure, you guessed it. I mean free air and free water. And my point about these familiar conveniences is very simple. They really are free at a Chevron gas station. The Chevron dealer never wants you to feel that just because you want a tire checked, you have to buy a quart of RPM compounded motor oil or some Chevron Supreme gasoline. No, sir. He welcomes the chance to fill your radiator to check your tires. It lets him prove that he really is alert and cheerful about his service. All Chevron gas stations, you know, are home-owned. And the best way these local businessmen have of making good is to treat you right. Just remember that next time your radiator or tires need checking. Look for a cream green and burgundy Chevron gas station. You're always welcome. And your Chevron credit card will be good as gold. George promised Mr. Ralston he'd hide Snookums until after the dog show. Now, it's a few minutes later, George, Claire, Sonny, and Snookums are driving home. Of all the crazy fool jobs, this takes the prize. Playing nursemaid to a dog, I quit. Now, Claire, will you stop it? We'll get to my apartment soon, and all I have to do is keep him there until tomorrow. Hurry, will you, Mr. Valentine? There's not much room in the back of this car for both Snookums and me. Now, Sonny, with Snookums on the floor, you've got the whole back seat to yourself. Yeah, we started out that way, but now our positions are reversed. <laughs> Mr. Valentine, don't pull up in front of the building. What's the matter? That policeman again. Oh, no. He's talking to some woman. Mrs. Jones, we borrowed her buggy. What are you going to do? Oh, uh, drive around to the back of our building. Sonny, you take Snookums up the fire escape. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Claire and I will wait until the coast is clear, then we'll go up the front way and let you in. Why do I have to be the one to take Snookums? Now, Sonny, follow order. <laughs> Did you unlock the back door, Claire? A few minutes ago. Then what's keeping Sonny and Snookum? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Valentine. Oh, well, I'd better find out. Sonny's probably got his hands full. Not a sign of him. There's Sonny. 
at the bottom of the fire escape. Sonny, what are you doing down there? I'm looking for Snookum. What? Where is he? If I knew, I wouldn't have to look. What are you talking about? Sonny, come on up here. I was afraid something like this would happen. Now, Claire, a dog his size doesn't just disappear all of a sudden. Sonny, will you hurry? I'm coming as fast as I can. What happened? Where is he? Well, you see, when we got to the fire escape, he went ahead of me. When I was on the second floor, he was on the fourth floor. Why did you let him go to the fourth floor? I live on the second floor. Yeah, I know that, but I don't think Snookums does. Oh, never mind. Which way did he go? Well, then I went up to the fourth floor, but he went down to the first floor. And that's the last I saw of him. Do you suppose he's somewhere in the building? Claire, you go to all the apartments on the first floor. I'll take this floor. And, Sonny, you take the third and fourth floors. Hey, why do I get two floors? Because you lost him. Now, get going. Isn't that your telephone, Mr. Valentine? Yes. Come on, Claire. Sonny, you go ahead and find Snookum. I'll try, Mr. Valentine. Want me to get it? Never mind. Hello? Hello, Mr. Valentine. Yes? This is Mr. Ralston. Oh, yes, Mr. Ralston. Something terrible has happened. Dumpling has had a nervous collapse. Who's Dumpling? My wife. Oh. She's worried about Snookums. That's why I called you. Mr. Valentine, I've decided to tell her everything. I want you to bring the dog back. Well, I can't do that. You can't. Why not? I mean, you can't do that. Uh, now, look, Mr. Ralston, this is your chance to take a firm stand. You don't want to be a chump for the rest of your life, do you? Well, no, I don't think so, but... Mr. Dumpling, Ralston, be a man. But she cries all the time, and it's so unnerving. I think I ought to let the, get the dog back to her. Yes, Bunny, I think you are better. Who said that? It sounded like my wife. It is your wife. I'm on the extension phone. Oh, dumpling. <laughs> Well, uh, you see, dear, uh, it was like this. We'll discuss uh, that later. Mr. Valentine? Yes, Mrs. Ralston. You bring that dog back here immediately. Do you understand? Oh, but, uh, Mrs. Ralston... I said immediately. But, uh, you uh, Snookums likes it here. I don't care about that. I want Snookums. Oh, well, you'll get him back when I find... when I find time. Has something happened to Snookums? Oh, oh no, 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 of course not. Well, remember, he's going to be in a dog show tomorrow. I know, but... Yes, yes, you see, that's just it. You don't want him doing a lot of traveling today, do you? It might upset him. Well, Snookums is sensitive. Oh, he is. Very sensitive. Very well. But if Snookums isn't back in time for the show and in good condition, you can do your explaining to the police. Is that clear, Mr. Valentine? No, perfectly clear. All right. Put him on. Put him on? Yes. I want to talk to him. You want to talk to Snookums? He'll recognize my voice. Oh, he always recognizes your voice, Dumpling. Put him on. You, uh, just a minute. Claire, what am I going to do? She wants to talk to Snookum. Figure it out for yourself, Mr. Valentine. Oh, uh, here, Snookum. <laughs> Snookum. <laughs> oh, Snookum. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Ralston, he's listening. Oh. Go ahead and talk. Snookum, hello, my precious. Hello, my angel. Speak to Mother, sweetheart. Snookum, speak to me. <laughs> What's the matter with his voice? Bad connection. Oh. <laughs> now remember, the first thing in the morning, Mr. Valentine, we'll meet you at the dog show. All right, Mrs. Ralston. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Ralston. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Valentine. Uh, goodbye, Dumpling. You come upstairs. Hello, girlie. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but have you seen anything of a dog? Hey, how are you, girlie? A large dog? Hmm. Hey, what are you doing this evening? Looking for a dog. Um, pardon me, but have you seen anything of a dog? A dog? Yes, ma'am, a dog. He just got home from work. He's eating his supper. Come on, will you hurry up? Now where are we going? Well, it's a cinch he's not in this building. We'll have to look in every building for miles around. Sonny, why didn't you hang on to him? I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. A lot of good that does. Don't you realize he's a very valuable dog? Maybe we ought to call the police. Oh, if they hear about this, then I will be sunk. I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. Will you stop saying that? Now, take it easy. Well, can you blame me? I fail a client. His wife never speaks to him again. The man's life is ruined. And Sonny's sorry. I'm very sorry. Oh, come on. Mr. Valentine. What's the matter? That policeman again. Oh, just keep right on walking. Don't see him. Wait, just a minute there. I want a word with you. Oh, <laughs> good afternoon, officer. What were you doing with Mrs. Jones's buggy? I found it for her around the corner. Oh, <laughs> darling, we, we forgot to return her buggy. <laughs> you forgot, sweetheart. Yeah, well, I'm terribly sorry, officer. I'll apologize to Mrs. Jones when I see her. And another thing. Mrs. Jones tells me you don't even have a baby. 
Now, what's going on around here anyway? Well, uh, you, uh, you see, she didn't know about it. I mean, it just happened. Yes. I mean, you know, sort of sudden like. Wasn't it, darling? Oh, yes. Uh, very sudden. Well, where's the little one now? Where's the little one? Well, he's he's at Grandma's. Yes, we're just going to get him. Goodbye, officer. I'll see you again. I think he's getting suspicious. Well, we have enough to worry about. Hey, something's going on across the street. Well, come on, let's go. Maybe one of them has seen Snooker. Is that a restaurant? Well, in a way. It's called Frank's Place. Ladies invited. I never saw such a sight. He dashed over to our table and knocked it right over. Uh Uh-oh. Well, he almost caused a riot jumping up on everything. It sounds like Snookum's all right. Come on. Hey. Hey, this is no place for Snookum's. He's not old enough. Mr. Valentine, look. It's Snookums. He's sound asleep. Asleep? He's out. Poor Snookums. Oh, he shouldn't have done it. I guess he's going to the dogs. You better wake him up so he can walk home. He's in no condition to walk. Then what are you going to do? Carry him. Mr. Valentine, aren't you overestimating your strength? Well, I'll just have to do it, that's all. Sonny, give me a hand. I can't budge him. Claire, get his feet. Sonny, get under him. All together now. Steady. Oh. Don't stop. Almost. There. Oh. What a load. Help me walk, Claire. Sonny, get on the other side of me. Okay. All right, let's go. Hey, is it safe to come out? Oh, yes. They fit your dog, Bud? Yeah, thanks a lot. Not so fast, Bud. That dog did a lot of damage around here. Okay. Claire, give the man my card. Just send me a bill. You bet I will, Bud. You owe me for three tables, six chairs, and a dozen glasses. Yeah? Yeah. And six short beers. I don't know if I'll ever be able to make it. We're almost there, Mr. Valentine. I'll never be the same again. Uh oh. Now what? That same policeman outside your building. Oh, cover Snookums up, Claire. With what? Uh, use your coat. Oh, no, you don't. I just bought this coat. Hurry up. I'll get you another one. With a fur collar? And ermine tails. Come on, cover his face, too. Now, come on, walk fast. He's looking our way. Well, don't pay any attention. Hey, you. Hey, what have you got there? Oh, <laughs> hello, officer. Just bringing baby home again. <laughs> I thought it was a new baby. That's an awful big load you've got. Well, you see, we... Uh, well, didn't we tell you? Tell me what? You tell him, darling. Oh, no. You tell him, sweetheart. Well, somebody tell me. <laughs> twins. Twins? You didn't say anything about twins? Well, I... I didn't want to brag. <laughs> twins. What do you know about that? No, I've just got to have a peep. Oh, Claire. I'm sorry, officer. Night air, you know, bad for them. Yes, they're so young. We can't uncover their faces. It'll be very unhealthy for us, for them. Yeah, sure, sure. We'd better get them right in, sweetheart. Yes, darling. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Burp. It was your... Oh. <laughs> and what was that? That was his brother. <laughs> in the ice bag. Okay, put it on his head. Here you are, Mr. Valentine. Another can of tomato juice. Put it down, Claire, and help me rub his paws. Why don't you just let him sleep it off? Don't you realize this dog has got to be in a dog show tomorrow morning? Jeepers. Well, there's only one thing left. A cold shower. But how are you going to get him in it? One of us will have to get in with him. Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. Mr. Valentine. Oh, no. <laughs> judge has apparently made his decision. You know, this is the winner's class of the Great Danes. Now the judge is ready. He's walking over to one of the handlers. He's giving the ribbon to, to Madam Charlotte Cornwell Smith, owner and handler of Hercules of Meadowbrook. Best of breed. Snookums a champion. I'm very sorry, Mr. Rolf. Oh, you did what you could, Mr. Valentine. There'll be no living with them now. I wish I could help you. No one can help me anymore. Uh, Mr. Ralston, about my bill. Oh, just mail it to me. But there were a few expenses. Expenses? Yeah, 12 pounds of meat, one damaged apartment, one damaged restaurant. We'll forget about the damaged nerves. Just send me the bill. Buddy! Buddy! Uh, 
Uh, we're over here, Dumpling. Uh, we wanted to get away from the crowd. Oh, isn't it wonderful? At last my ambition has been realized. Snookums is a champion. Oh, congratulations, Mrs. Ralston. Oh, you're really the one who should be congratulated, Mr. Valentine. Why? What do you mean? Well, usually Snookums doesn't show at all well. He gets so nervous and skittish. That's so? I don't know what you did to him, Mr. Valentine, but I never saw such a change in a dog. Bunny, did you notice? He was so dignified, so sedate, so sober. Yes. <laughs> we finally managed to straighten him out. I owe you a great deal, Mr. Valentine. I wish I could think of some way to repay you. Uh oh, I can think of a way. Oh? You see, Mrs. Ralston, I've become very fond of Snookum, and I'd like to know that he was happy. You don't think he's happy now? Why, he's a champion. Well, I, I don't think that means much to a dog. And Snookums is a very affectionate animal, Mrs. Ralston. He should be around children. Children? Yeah, that's right, Dumpling. And my brother's family. Well, maybe you're right, Mr. Valentine. Maybe he's right, Bunny. I think he's wonderful. Snookums doesn't really need me now that he's a champion. And besides, I just bought Nero of Falconville. You bought another dog? Oh, yes. And if I devote myself to him, someday I may have another champion. Dumpling. Come, Bunny, I want to introduce you to Nero. Goodbye, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine. I'm sorry, Mr. Ralston, but I can't do anything for you. Bunny, are you coming? Yes, Dumpling. Ah, <laughs> oh, the poor little guy. Hey, you. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, no. Hello, officer. Well, congratulations, young man. Congratulations? For what? For what? I see your twins won his championship. George will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, most everyone, I suppose, has heard of the hit show, Harvey. It's all about a rabbit that no one ever really sees. Well, your neighborhood Chevron gas station has a Harvey, too. Only instead of a rabbit, it's a welcome mat. And as a matter of fact, this welcome mat isn't so very invisible if you look real close. There's welcome, for instance, in the smile of the attendant at a Chevron gas station. That clean, bright, cream green and burgundy paint job seems to say welcome, too. It's in the accommodating way the Chevron man checks your tires or wipes your windshield. And in the way he gives you street directions or says thanks a million when he returns your Chevron credit card. Naturally, there's a good reason for the friendliness you meet at Chevron gas stations. You see, they're all home-owned. They're local businesses that depend on keeping folks pleased to keep their trade. And remember, all Chevron dealers carry RPM compounded motor oil and Chevron Supreme gasoline. Well, next week, Mr. Valentine is in for a mad chase, and you'll probably hear something like this. Mr. Valentine, do something. She's trying to lose us. Keep your eye on her tail light, Claire. I'll fix her. What are you going to do? Turn off our lights so she won't know we're following her. Mr. Valentine, don't do that. I can't see a thing. What are you worried about? I can't see anything either. And I'm driving. Chevron gas stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George, with Francis Robinson as Claire and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vincent. Others in the cast were Junius Matthews as Mr. Ralston, Georgia Backus as Mrs. Ralston, Willard Waterman as the policeman, Herman Waldman as the bartender, and Ed Harper as the woman, and Snookums was played by Earl Keane. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dan, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.